Hey everybody, welcome back to When Harry Met Board Games, where we feed our people with relatable content and our victory condition is your satisfaction. I'm Harry and before we go any further, don't forget to hit the subscribe button somewhere on the lower right hand of your screen. Today we're going to have another playthrough. We'll be playing through Lord of the Rings. This is the original co-op game, cooperative game designed by Reiner Knizia and it takes place within the Lord of the Rings uh, saga. So basically players are all a team of Hobbit characters who are going through the journeys in Middle-earth, ultimately trying to culminate in the land of Mordor, Mount Doom, to destroy the One Ring. So let me show you how the game uh, it looks like when it's set up. Here we have two boards. In particular, you have the main player board here, which has all the different... Um, regions that you'll be going through in middle earth as you progress some of these regions are represented by individual adventure boards that we will be exploring there there are two double-sided um boards adventure boards to represent four of these regions and some of these regions are just regions you're going to be stopping by to collect a few cards and make a few interesting decisions right here you have the corruption track which runs all the way from number zero to number 15 uh, we will have these progress tokens here that show us as we progress from one region to another. Finally, again, culminating in Mordor. That is how the good guys win this game, by going to Mordor and successfully destroying the ring on Mount Doom. Um, here we have the two characters. I'll be playing, this is a two to four player game, or two to five player game, I should say. I'll be playing two characters, so I am playing solo, but I will be controlling two characters. In particular, I'll be tr controlling Frodo, and I'll be controlling Sam. And each character has their unique special ability. So, for example, with Frodo, it says you may use any brown card, brown quest card, as if it's were, it were a wild, basically. So, there's different symbols of these cards you're going to be using to help you progress in different tracks along the boards. But in particular, Frodo can use any brown colored card as if it were a wild. Because there are two color kind of color cards in the quest cards. You have your grays and you have your browns. And when you do play quest cards, you could only play one of each color. He's allowed to use the browns as if they represented any symbol. Then you have Sam here. And he says his special power is the threat die cannot cause you to discard more than a single card or to move more than a single space on the corruption track. Because throughout the game, certain things, certain events will uh, provoke us to roll this threat die. And this threat die can make you advance a few spaces. One space, two spaces, even three spaces on the corruption track, which I'll explain shortly. Or it can make you discard two cards. Or it can make Sauron advance himself in the corruption track. Or you can get lucky and nothing happens. Well, with Sam, his benefit is that he's never going to discard more than one card and he will never advance more than one spot in the Corruption Track. Because the way you lose this game here, as players progress throughout the game, they will be acquiring Corruption, which is indicated by advancing the player token alongside the Corruption Track here. They will have opportunities to heal some of that Corruption and regress or go back on the corruption track but ultimately their momentum will lead them forward in this track also things will trigger the movement of sauron and sauron himself will be moving past this track now whenever sauron and one of the hobbits intersect in a path or he's able to pass them along the path then that character dies and that player is eliminated from the game now if the ring bearer should happen to die the game is over so you want to manage and manipulate the situation wisely as far as who is the ring bearer the game always starts with frodo being the ring bearer i use this little keychain here as the one ring so frodo will be the ring bearer but from round to round it's very possible and likely that the ring bearer uh, or the ring shall change hands now so that's how you win and lose the game destroying the ring at mount doom is your ultimate objective you lose the game by elimination when sauron crosses paths with one of the hobbit characters now we have these special cards here these are special quest cards that will be added throughout the game as we go to different regions all of these cards are associated 
with different regions throughout Middle Earth. And when we go to these regions, we can unlock some of these cards. We have the quest deck, the main quest deck right here, all shuffled up. We do not start necessarily with a hand of cards just yet. Here we have the first adventure board, which is not the first location. We start in Bag End, then we go to Rivendell. These are just places where we go to acquire some cards and make a few interesting decisions. But then Moriah, which is this board right here, is our first quest board, our first adventure board. And then eventually we go to Lothlorien again to just pick up some resources. Then we go to Helm's Deep, which is the opposite side of this board. And then finally we close off in Shelob's Lair and Mordor, which are these two-sided board right here, right? So for now, we just have this open right here. We have three different tracks. Most of these adventure boards have three different tracks uh, indicated by certain symbols. We have this symbol here of a traveler here. This is like the adventurer uh, track here. We have the battle track symboli uh, symbolized by this sword and this axe. And here, this shield, I can't quite remember what this uh, track rem uh, indicates, but this is a third track that we'll be progressing throughout the game. The middle track on any of these boards is the most important one. That's the one that will indicate progress through that adventure and uh, moving on to the next adventure. Until you complete this middle track here, you are not ready to uh, go on to the next adventure. However, we do have this time to uh, this uh, event token here, which will go down through these different events that will be triggered by certain tiles here. We have our our story tiles here that we will be drawing from throughout the game. And as these uh, events are triggered, sometimes good things happen to us. More often than not, bad things happen to us, right? So you kind of want to progress through the adventure in an efficient manner so that not too many of these events get triggered. And also, as we land on these different spaces, different things are triggered. So this symbol right here uh, represents mana, and this is, uh, or I should say runes, and this is a currency in this game that we use for different things to avoid certain bad things happening to us, but also we use this to buy from the Gandalf card. So we have a uh, lineup of five Gandalf cards that give you special one-time abilities. They're right here, representing the fact that Gandalf is sporadically, you know, available for you and a presence in your journey to Mordor but sometimes he's not around when you need him most so whenever you have enough of these runes to purchase one of these cards and each of these costs five you're able to activate whatever ability it does then and there um all right then you have your life tokens right you have your ring tokens and your heart tokens and this uh wisdom token or i not too sure what it it's supposed to represent. But as you land on these spots on the different tracks, the player who lands on that spot will acquire one of these tokens. And these tokens are basically helpful for the avoiding of corruption. Because at the end of each adventure, you need to have one of each of them to avoid having corruption. For every um, symbol that you did not acquire through that adventure, you will... Uh, suffer one corruption, which again means advancing on this track right here. So that is that. Then you also have these terrible deadly spots right here with the black squares. That just represents that when you land on that spot or when you go through that spot, you need to roll the threat die. And again, the threat die can be very dangerous. And every so often you could get lucky and roll this blank spot and nothing necessarily happens. Now, let's simulate what a turn actually looks like. So, on a player's turn, the first thing they're going to do is they're going to draw from the top of the story tile stack right here and see what it does. So, this, for example, is the symbol of the combat uh, track. So, what this means is, is that you advance one space on the corresponding track. And again, you trigger whatever benefit or casualty you get for that spot. So in this case, I would get a rune. Now, if this were not, if I would not have drawn a um, tile corresponding to one of the tracks, what would have happened is I would keep on flipping story tiles until that happens. Because again, some of the other story tiles are potential threats from Sauron. Some of them uh, force you to advance down the event track. And again, 
we have the ones that correspond to the actual progress on these three different tracks right here. So until you actually progress into a, one of the tracks, you keep on flipping these story tiles. Now, once you do, you basically have your resolution phase at the end of your turn. And there are three things you could do. You could either choose to do nothing and just heal yourself one corruption, which is not relevant right now because we're at zero. Or you can uh, play cards, two quest cards on your turn. You can only play one or uh, one of each color. Again, there's two colors. There's the brown ones and there are the uh, gray ones. You can play one of each color. If you don't have uh, one of each color, then you could only play one, I guess, right? And sometimes you have some special cards right here, like these green bordered cards. You can play them whenever you want, including on a player's turn. So this, for example, says one player and it has that little circle symbol, which is the symbol for healing in this game, right? So um, those are the things you could do. And also you could draw instead of healing or instead of playing two cards, you could actually draw two additional quest cards to your stack. So we're basically skipping the first couple of um, areas, which is Bag End and Rivendell, um, which again allows you to grab some of these cards, these special cards from Rivendell. You split them up among the players. It also allows you to get a little startup uh, cards for your deck. So I'm just going to simulate that real quick. You each grab a few cards right here. And there's a little bit of decision making as well, um, taking some risk for additional cards that might, um, you know, pay off for you or might not because you might have to roll a threat die and it might do something terrible that hurts your team and its chances. So, and then finally, when you get to Mariah, the first location, we start going through this board. And as I've already uh, illustrated, we drew this tile right here. We advance one spot. We're one step closer to finishing this track. And now the next player, and the ring bearer always goes first in each uh, specific adventure board. Now the next player, which is Sam, also drew the same exact tile. So he will advance on this track right here. Now I didn't choose what I was going to do with um, Frodo on his resolution phase. So I'm just going to grab two more cards for him right here. So now Sam has advanced on this track. Again, he has three choices. He could try to heal his corruption, which is not relevant in this scenario. He could either draw two more cards if he doesn't like what he has, or he can play two cards. Now, as you can see, I've got mostly brown cards with Sam, and I have a few of these special event cards that I could use at any time. But I do have a few gray cards. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play this one gray card here, which has the symbol of the main track here that I'm trying to advance. And I'm going to play another uh, brown card. I'm going to play this right here, which has that shield symbol, which will allow me to advance on this track. So because I advance on this track, Sam gets a ring token, which again is going to help him to avoid corruption at the end of the turn. Also, at the end of each adventure, Whoever has the most ring tokens will become the new ring bearer. So that's also relevant for that. Um, and I advance on this track right here, which according to this little image here, I gain the Book of Mazabul uh, right here. The Book of Mazabul card right here. I gain this into my hand thanks to advancing on that spot. And now we're done. So now Frodo goes again. He draws from this tile here, and this tile here says that players need to discard a card, a life token, and a rune in, com in conjunction, in combination. It doesn't need to be any one player. The group of players needs to discard one of each of this, a card, a, a life token, these right here, or a rune and a rune, or else the event track will be advanced one spot. So, first of all, let's see what the first event here is and if we're afraid of it. It says, the group discards uh, one card with the little uh, bagpipe fellowship, uh, not bagpipe, little pipe fellowship image, or and a wild card. Otherwise, Sauron advances one spot. Now, Sauron advancing on this track is kind of like the worst thing that could happen because Sauron, once he advances, he never regresses. He never goes back. So, you kind of don't want... Uh, Sauron to advance. 
At the same time, it's only one spot. Now, we could just choose to discard those cards as a group. Um, or we could just choose to discard all of these. I think this will actually be more painful. So I'm going to choose. We're going to choose to do this. We're each, uh, or as a team at least, we're going to discard one of these cards with a pipe symbol. You could always discard a wild. This is what a wild looks like. This star here represents anything you want it to represent. Um, but Sam here has that little pipe right there. He's going to discard that. And we need a star. And I'm going to discard a wild or a star from, from Frodo because all of his browns, again, his power, all of his brown cards are treated as wilds anyway. So he'll discard this card. So we do go on to this event, but nothing happens with Sauron. So we continue Frodo's turn. He flips over another tile. And we have the little adventurer track here, which will be advanced. And he'll get another rune into his collection. And now again, he has to choose for his resolution. He's either going to heal, which he has nothing to heal. He's either going to draw two more cards, or he's going to play two cards, potentially, one of each color, brown and gray. And I'm actually going to choose to play the two cards. So he's going to play this card here that has two symbols of the... Uh, sword and axe the combat track which means he gets to advance this track two spaces he will collect two runes for doing so two runes right there and that was his brown card now he will play a gray card and for his gray card he is going to play uh this adventurer right here and advance the adventure track and get one more rune so he already has five rune five runes which is helpful if if for any situation we feel like we need to call upon gandalf and again there's a couple events that sometimes you need to pay runes to avoid some really bad things from happening so now we'll move on to sam's next turn he starts by drawing the storyline tile he has this pipe symbol now there is uh there are boards that have this track uh, as one of the tracks on it. However, this particular board, the board of, of, of Moriah, does not have that track on it. What happens when you draw one of these symbols of a track that's not represented on the current board is that you can use this as a wild. You can use this to advance any of the other tracks. So Sam is going to choose to advance this track here. Uh, as a matter of fact, no, he's going to use it to advance this track here. So he could get this life token symbol. So now he has two of the three necessary life token symbols. And now he gets to either heal, which again, he doesn't need to, draw two cards, or play two cards, one gray and one brown. And he's going to choose to play two cards. So I'm going to play uh, this card right here to advance the fellowship track right there and i'm gonna play he's gonna play sam's gonna play uh he's gonna play so that was the gray card and now he's gonna play this brown card here with two shield symbols to advance two spots here he'll earn himself a ring another ring so he has a good chance of being the ring bearer next turn next uh round and he'll get a heart token so now he has all three of the necessary life tokens in order to avoid uh, acquiring any uh, corruption. Okay, so we are done with that. That's Sam's turn. And now we move back to Frodo. Again, he'll draw from the story tiles. He draws this little adventurer tile right here. We've been very fortunate to not draw some of the dreadful tiles here that hurt us in lots of ways. So he'll advance here. He gets another room. And you know what? Just to show you guys what we could do with Gandalf, I'm going to use five of these here to buy one of the Gandalf cards. And let's see what the five different Gandalf cards do right here. So first of all, we have Foresight right here, which allows one player to look at and rearrange the top three story tiles. Very, very helpful for the prevention of really bad things. We have Persistence. One player gets to draw four quest cards. Helpful for when you're running low on quest cards. We have healing. One player is allowed to heal two spaces. Very, very helpful. 
Guidance. The active player may use this card as if it were represented two wild symbols. And finally, magic. After moving the event marker, ignore the event. So out of all of these, the only one that I find to be very relevant right now is the guidance. We'll use this as two wild symbols. So because I paid for this, Frodo will advance two spots and he's going to choose for it to be on this track here. He'll advance through here, which first of all means he needs to roll the threat die. So let's roll the threat die right here. And we've got these three dots, which indicates that Frodo must advance three spaces on the corruption track, which is pretty bad because the track only goes to 15. So again, he was going to move two spaces forward. That was just one. Here's the second space. He gets another room. And now at the end of his turn, he could either play two more cards or he can um, heal or he can draw two more cards. And I think I am going to choose to heal just because, again, you want to keep this corruption track um, in check as much as possible because it can get out of control. And as Sauron advances, it can get very intimidating. So I will choose to heal one spot. You know, you wish you could heal more. You do have a Gandalf card here that can help you heal more. But with your resolution action, all you can do is heal one. And now we'll have another turn of Sam. And Sam will draw the top tile right here. And he draws this shield symbol here. So he'll advance one more spot on this track. He'll get another ring. So he already has three rings. It's very likely he'll be the ring bearer going into the next adventure. And now he gets to draw uh, or play two cards or, or heal, which he doesn't need to heal, or draw two cards. Um, he's going to play the two cards. So he will play this gray right here with two wild symbols. And he'll use that to advance this track right here. And he'll just, uh, well, he'll only play one of those. So he'll advance two. So the first thing is he needs to roll this threat die. And he rolled three symbols right here. But because Sam's special power is that no matter what he rolls, he only discards at most one card or advances at most one space in the corruption track, he will only advance one spot right here. Um, so that's what he does for rolling the threat die. And he gets a rune. But in particular, this gold symbol here represents some of the hidden runes of Gandalf, which may or may not be more valuable. You randomly draw one here, and it's worth two runes, so that's pretty good. Okay, and now we are done with uh, this Mariah board here. And what would happen is, on the main board, we would progress to Lothlorien. We would get the, the cards that you acquire in that location. You would make a few other decisions before you move to the three final locations on the main board here, which all three of these are adventures indicated by the different adventure boards in the game, which include, again, Helm's Deep, uh, Shelob's Lair, right here, and finally, Mordor. And players are going to try to progress through this final track until they make it all the way to Mount Doom. And once they've made it to Mount Doom, and they've survived, and they've withstood, and they have not advanced far enough in the corruption track to intersect um, with um, Sauron here, then each of the players gets a chance to destroy the One Ring or basically die trying. If players are able to successfully destroy the One Ring, then uh, the game is over and the good guys have won. If anywhere along that journey, even prior to Mordor, the Ring Bearer dies because uh, Sauron catches up to him, then the Fellowship loses the game. That is pretty much it in a nutshell. This is a neat game. This basically um, was the innovator or pioneer of what now is a very popular genre within the board game hobby, which is the cooperative game. Um, nice and neat. It's a little bit puzzly. Uh, if you do not like your co-op games to feel too puzzly or too abstracted, this perhaps is not the game for you. But if you like lord of the rings uh and its universe and its story 
I do feel like this game incorporates lots of things that a fan could appreciate. The event tracks here are really neat and refer to different things that happened in the movies or in the books. This actually came shortly before the first of the three uh, movies. So this is more based on the books than it is on the movies. But it has some interesting references to the different storylines as well as the main player board here as well. So if you can appreciate that, I feel like this game does a good job at it. It's a tough game to beat. It's not easy by any means. And at the end of the day, you could always adjust your difficulty level by starting Sauron on a different number other than 15. If you feel like you've gotten so good. So again, this game is nice and neat for that sake. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it as far as this playthrough. Just wanted to give you guys an idea of how to play this game. This is a classic. It's old school. I still appreciate it uh, so much so that it's one of the few solo game, uh, few co-op games that don't have a solo version that I still occasionally play solo, again, by controlling two characters. Well, thank you so much for joining us here today again at When Harry Met Board Games. Again, don't forget to hit the subscribe button down low, uh, down on the lower right-hand corner of the screen. And uh, we'll catch you next time. Take care, everybody, and have a good day. Bye-bye.